Republicans, led by you, this week blocked the bill expanding health care access for veterans who have been exposed to toxic burn pits. There are veterans currently, right now, camped out on the Capitol steps, not to mention veterans all over the country, including ones I'm sure you've been hearing from in Pennsylvania, upset about this. And this delay has a real impact. I want you to take a listen to this from Danielle Robinson this morning, her husband, Sergeant First Class Heath Robinson, who the bill is named after. He died from lung cancer attributed to burn pit exposure. Here she is this morning talking about how the cost of how long this is taking to get done. We know a veteran who actually took his life um, because of the delay. He was denied from the VA and he lost his private health insurance. He would qualify under this new bill. Um, once he learned about the delay, he actually did take his own life because he wanted to spare his family of losing their home. Now, to be clear, she's talking about a previous delay, not the one you caused last week, but what do you say to those who find it impossible to believe that of all the multi-trillions of dollars in our federal budget, <clears throat> this is where you and Republicans decided to take a stand? Here's what uh, you need to keep in mind, Jake. First of all, um, this is the oldest trick in Washington. Uh, people take a sympathetic group of Americans, and it could be children with an illness, it could be victims of crime, it could be veterans who've been exposed to toxic chemicals, craft a bill to address their problems, and then sneak in something completely unrelated that they know could never pass on its own and dare Republicans to do anything about it because they know they'll unleash their allies in the media and maybe a, a pseudo celebrity to make up false accusations to try to get us to just swallow what shouldn't be there. That's what's happening here, Jake. But, but this, my this efforts, my Republican bill, colleagues. This was in the bill my, let me, the let me, last month. Yeah, and we were promised that we'd have an opportunity to offer an amendment to, to change this. And then, of course, that was reneged on. So people hadn't had a chance to be socialized about this. Let me be very clear. Republicans are not opposed to any of the substance of the PACT Act. The honest Repub my honest Democratic colleagues will fully acknowledge that my objection, and if I get my way, I get my change, it will not change by one penny any spending on any veterans program. What I'm trying to do is change a government accounting methodology that is designed to allow our Democratic colleagues to go on an unrelated $400 billion spending spree that has nothing to do with veterans and that won't be in the veteran space. So that's what I'm trying to do. They could have agreed to this a month ago and this bill would sail through at any point in time. Look, we can resolve this with an amendment vote. Right. But some of the Democrats don't even want to have an amendment vote. Well, Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer says that he is willing to give you a vote on your amendment. And I guess the question I have is if you get that vote, your a vote on your amendment, will you agree to vote? for cloture, which for our viewers, that's allowing the bill to come to the floor. In other words, we don't expect Senator Toomey will, will vote for this, this bill, but will you vote for, to allow a vote on the bill? Oh, well, let's, let, well, first of all, let's be clear. If my amendment passes and we strip out this completely unrelated provision worth $400 billion, I will vote for the bill. So, so, so that's number one. Um, I, look, Cloture is not blocking the bill. What the cloture vote means, there can be no more amendment votes. I might have some colleagues who have a couple of amendments. We've been allowed no amendment votes on the biggest change to the VA in I don't know how long. So I think we ought to have a few votes. I want to have my amendment considered because I think this is important. We could have done this a month ago, Jake. Um, now, Chairman Tester, I know he very much wants this bill to pass. I believe he and his staff are working in good faith with us to get to a resolution. But there's some Democrats that simply want to say, no, you don't get to change anything. We don't have any more debate. We don't have amendments. We're just going to jam this through. So that's the source of the tension. Okay, but it's not enough for you to get a vote on your amendment. You want your Republican colleagues to get votes on their amendments also as well. Look, is, is it, what I'm it's, not, it's, not only, it's not only up to me, Jake. I, I mean, I do think anybody who has an amendment ought to be able to get their amendment. That probably means two or three amendment votes. We could bang that out tomorrow night, literally, yeah. and then pass the bill with probably 85 votes. So the top... Uh, we'll see if our Democratic colleagues want to actually pass the bill. The top Republican on the Senate Veterans Affairs Committee, Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas, he says he thinks Republicans should pass this now and fix any problems that emerge later. Yeah, except there's never an opportunity to fix the problems later. That's why they're not giving us the opportunity now. They know they can prevent us from fixing it later. So one of the questions that I think people have about what you're claiming is a budgetary gimmick is 
The VA budgets will always remain subject to congressional oversight. They can't just spend this money yeah. any way they want. And from what, how I read this legislation, it says that this money has to be spent on health care for veterans who suffered exposure from yeah. toxic burn pits. This is why they do this sort of thing, Jake, because it gets very deep in the weeds and very confusing for people very quickly. It's not really about veteran spending. It's about what category of government bookkeeping they put the veteran spending in. Uh, my change, uh, the honest people acknowledge, it will have no effect on the amount of money or the circumstances under which the money for veterans is being spent. But what I want to do is treat it for government accounting purposes the way we've always treated it for government accounting purposes. Because if we change it to the way that the Democrats want, it creates room in future budgets for $400 billion of totally unrelated extraneous spending on other matters. That's what I want to prevent. We are spending way too much money to use to hide behind a veterans bill. The opportunity to go on an unrelated $400 billion spending spree is wrong and we shouldn't allow it.